The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, I'm Karen, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about ultrasonic distance sensors. Let's do it. An ultrasonic sensor can detect the distance of an object within its range without requiring physical contact. In nature, dolphins and bats are two animals that can detect their surroundings by using echolocation. Both creatures emit sound waves, which echo off nearby objects, bouncing waves back towards the animals. The animals use these echoes to locate and identify objects in their surroundings. Ships and submarines use the same technique to detect objects underwater with sonar. The time it takes for the sound to reflect back to the sonar is used to calculate the distance of the objects. The formula for calculating distance is 1 half t times c. t is the time it takes for the ultrasound to travel to the object and return to the sensor. Since that's twice the distance between the sensor and the object, we multiply by half so that the distance is only counted once. Then times c, the speed of sound, or sonic speed. The speed of sound is about 767 miles per hour at sea level, but sound can travel 4.3 times faster in water than in air. Ultrasonic sensors use a vibrating membrane to both generate and detect the sound used to determine distance. Humans can typically hear sounds within the acoustic frequency range of 20 Hz up to 20 kHz. Above 20 kHz is the ultrasonic range. Ultrasonic sounds are those with waves with a frequency above the upper limit of human hearing. Ultrasound is used in medical imaging. The faster the membrane vibrates, the higher the frequency. Ultrasonic sensors convert energy between electrical signals and sound waves, making them transducers. A transducer is a device that converts a signal from one form of energy to another. In this case, electric current and sound waves. Ultrasonic transducers typically function in one of two ways, piezoelectric or capacitive. I've talked about piezoelectric devices before in previous learning circuit videos, like with microphones and speakers and accelerometers. You can find the links to those videos in the description below. Piezoelectric devices use a crystal substance that when a charge is introduced, the particles rearrange, causing a membrane or diaphragm to flex back and forth very quickly. In ultrasonic sensors, the diaphragm movement can either generate ultrasonic waves or will vibrate in response to received waves and translate that energy into electrical signals. The other type of transducer is capacitive. Let's look back at what we learned about capacitors in a previous video. Capacitors have two conductive plates separated by a dielectric material. When connected to power, one plate gains electrons, becoming negatively charged, while the second plate loses electrons, becoming positively charged. In a capacitive transducer, one plate, or electrode, sits on a dielectric membrane, which is suspended above a cavity in its silicon substrate. The substrate acts as the second electrode. When current is applied to the transducer, the electrodes become charged, and the top plate is attracted to, or repelled by, the lower plate, moving the membrane. Applying an alternating current can cause this to happen quickly, making the membrane vibrate and act as a diaphragm generating ultrasonic waves. It's helpful to understand that sound waves are just moving air. When a diaphragm vibrates, air is pushed out in waves at the same frequency as the vibration. When the sound reflects off nearby objects and bounces back, it is, again, air waves of a certain frequency that cause the diaphragm to vibrate and the transducer converts this energy to electrical signals in the form of alternating current. Each ultrasonic sensor emits sounds in a specific frequency, so whatever frequency it emits is the same frequency it is looking to detect. This is why sounds of other frequencies don't affect the sensor's readings. Capacitive transducers, often abbreviated to CMUT, are micro-machined. The micro-machine man here presenting the genuine original, colossally collectible, most midget miniature replicas of the real things, micro-machines. I'm not talking about the tiny toy cars from the 80s, more like MEMS technology. Unlike piezoelectric transducers, CMUTs can be manufactured using methods similar to MEMS and integrated directly into electrical circuits. 
Not only does this make them cheap and easy to manufacture, but they can be tightly packed into arrays, with CMUTs that use a variety of frequencies, yielding an overall larger bandwidth. This is still a relatively new concept in the field of ultrasonic transducers, so most commercial ultrasonic sensors still use piezoelectric technology. But since humans are obsessed with making our electronics as small and compact as possible, I'm guessing that will change pretty quickly in the years to come. While some sensors use a separate sound emitter and receiver, it's also possible to combine them into a single device, having an ultrasonic element alternate between emitting and receiving signals. The sound from the emitter comes out at an angle, resulting in a cone-shaped detection area. This shape will vary slightly depending on the model. Notice that most of these models can detect up to between 5 and 15 feet away. And in particular on these HRLV models, the different fields show the detection of various diameter objects. A smaller object, like a 1 quarter inch dowel, can only be detected for a limited distance while a larger object can be detected from farther away. The range of an ultrasonic sensor is determined by the frequency of vibration of the transducer. As the frequency increases, the sound waves transmit for progressively shorter distances. So long-range ultrasonic sensors work best at lower frequencies, and short-range ultrasonic sensors work best at higher frequencies. Detection is dependent on the ultrasound reflecting off the objects and back to the sensor. There are a variety of factors that can prevent an object from being detected. As stated, the object has to be close enough and large enough. If an object is too close to the sensor, it may be in what is known as the blind zone. Single unit sensors can only emit or detect at any given time. If it is emitting, it cannot detect. Objects that are too close will reflect sound too soon to be detected. If the sensor is mounted too low, the floor may give off false positives. The object also needs to be shaped in a way that the waves are reflected back and not in a direction away from the sensor. Materials that absorb sound don't reflect it well, so they may be difficult to detect. A fortunate feature is that ultrasonic sensors are not affected by color or other visual characteristics of the detected object, and can even detect clear plastic and the surface of water. Some units are even fully enclosed and waterproof in order to be used for water level sensing. The ultrasonic sensors most commonly used by hobbyists come pre-built into boards that help process the data. These will have pins for power and ground, and either one or two pins used to trigger the signal emitted out and detect the echo signal that is received. While there are a variety of sensors that can simply detect movement or an object in its range, ultrasonic distance sensors are special in that they can tell just how far away that object is. Be sure to check out my next video, where I show how to use one of these handy devices in a project. In the meantime, as usual, if you have any comments or questions about what I talked about in this video, you can find me, Maker Karen, by posting on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.